Hello, welcome, Commissar Marek here. Today we'll take a look at Season 3 Augustus and Augustus settings in the game. Because Vanilla, Season 3 or Julius didn't actually have any settings, while Augustus adds a myriad of ways you can customize your game. So let's take a look at general settings here first. You can switch your language here. Game speed, which you can also do in game, so that's not too useful. Full screen resolution, audio options general things, but still good to have it all in one place, so you don't have to go through the tabs like you used to. Now, in here, scroll speed, that could be useful if you feel like you are doing moving too slow when you are panning your cam around, but here, you can actually disable playing intro videos, which is super useful because it's always just annoying when you play the game uh, extensively, so that's good. Then you have extra information on the control panel, so that's right here on the right side, you can see we have a panel and we have all these different goals here and guards and things like that. This is very useful to have. We also have requests and invasions, all the information you need from your advisors basically uh, at a glance on the right side. So that's very useful. Next we have disable max scrolling on those edge, that's not too useful for me, I don't use that. Show range when building reservoirs, fountains, fountains and wells. That's super useful when you are making fountains in your blocks. Uh, so that you make sure that they cover everything, especially when you are on the desert map, when the range is shorter, or if you build a Grand Temple to Neptune, because that will increase the range of the fountains and you can interpret exactly how far they can reach. Also, you can have an option where the other one, let's take a look at it, user interface, show range of fountains and walls when building houses. So if we make a reservoir here and then want to build a house, it should still show us the range of the fountain, right? So if you end up in a situation where you place fountains first or your block isn't complete, you can actually see that now we have the range available, so you can actually build houses and proper places. but. I usually like to place fountains only after the mergers happen and that's because I like to cover some houses with only a corner of access, they don't need to be covered entirely, just one tile needs to be covered. Let's go back, so we have show uh, draggable construction size, that's good, that's for your aqueducts and roads. Highlight legion on cursor hover is also good, it will make the soldiers appear red. Um, and then you can see which units are you selecting when you hover over them. Enable military sidebar. So if we do that, we should have... I, I guess this is not a military map. I don't use that option. You can experiment with that. But uh, I don't use that. I don't actually know what it really does. I think it will uh, show your legions, which could be uh, useful in a military heavy map. Display max attainable prosperity rating with current housing. That's actually a super useful rating or um, function. If you go into your ratings and you click on your prosperity, if you will have people in your city, in here it will display what's your maximum prosperity. Because how it works in the vanilla game is you build your city and then you need to watch it grow prosperity over time and it will stop at some point. But you have no, no real way other than calculating every single house type in the city to know when it's gonna stop. So this way you can actually uh, tell that at a glance, so it will simplify that. Use that at your own discretion. Separate digits, don't, I don't use that, I don't actually know what it does. It's, yeah, it, it makes larger gaps between um, digits. Inverse dragging map, uh, showing you messages, allows instead of pop-ups. Uh, that's actually useful. I think uh, it will mean that you don't get spammed as often with messages. Uh, which can happen. The pop-ups can be really annoying. If it happens constantly, you can do that. Always show rotation buttons, that's not too useful. Preview path traveled by roaming walkers. That's actually something that's a new addition in Augustus and you have to grab the most recent uh, I guess this unstable build, what it does is you can see the blue line uh, that's on the road and it will show you where walkers will go if you build a certain building. 
so what will they cover? This is super useful for engineers, prefects, things like that, so that you know exactly what they will cover, especially in your industrial areas or if you have sprawling roads in your uh, farming, for example. Okay, that's all the settings from the UI, I think. Difficulty. Uh, I recommend everyone should be playing on very hard difficulty. It does add a another level of complexity. I think economic difficulty is harder. People just don't pay taxes as soon as they become shacks. You need to make them larger. Uh, they also will, the sentiment and health will be harder. And the random events like uh, land trade problems, sea trade problems can happen more often than uh, they would on lower difficulties. Enemy sizes are also amplified. So if there is an invasion of uh, strength of 100, it will actually come at around 160 men, I think. So it will amplify numbers of enemies, but it will not buff their stats. There are no stat sheets uh, in Caesar, unlike in some other uh, city building games like that, like Empire, where uh, the enemies are still the same amount. It's just they are insanely strong and powerful, which doesn't make any sense that one of their guys will kill five viewers. But in here, it's just enemy numbers, which is actually a much better way to deal with difficulty, I feel like. You can enable God Curses of Blessings, that's good, because you want to have that extra uh, level of complexity in your cities where you need to take care of the gods and placate them and avoid curses and receive blessings if you do really well. Uh, disable Jealousness of the Gods, I don't uh, recommend you flick this, because it would mean that gods will not care how much you worship the other ones. Well, if you don't have that, it adds to a level of difficulty where you need to take care of all the gods equally or they will not be happy. It also, building a grand temple counts towards their uh, placation, so they will mind that the other ones will. Enable global labor pool. I suggest you keep this on. Uh, it will mean that your uh, houses will no, or your you know, structures will no longer send out labor walkers, and instead they will get access to the global labor pool even without the walker touching any housing, which is a uh, quality of life thing mainly. It's just for a modern player and city builder like Caesar 3, it is crucial to be able to build quickly and not have to observe patterns of walkers constantly. So I feel like uh, this is a must to pick up. It will mean that your industry will end up looking a little bit different, but to be honest, I just slap one by one or you know, two by two labor, t labor tents in my industry anyway, so it wouldn't look much different. It's just, it's a simplification, but I really like this setting. I like to play with it. I don't really enjoy playing without it anymore. Chin citizens and time manage from 50 to 60. I feel like this change, it makes it actually harder because your city will have much more unemployment, which is a big deal in cities above even like 6,000 pop. I can run 500 unemployment, no problem. So it just will mean that you will actually have to be creative with your cities and use the labor sponging sometimes, but it also means that you will not run into the problem of the demographic shift and cliff too soon. So this could be good. Fixed worker pool of 38% of plebeian population. That's not good. If you flick this, it will disable aging in the game, which uh, can solve issues if you take really long and your cities are ancient and they are just there for 100 years. Uh, the population will not age and die off. There will not be the demographic cliff, but it will mean that always, at all times, part of your population will just not be working age and it's gonna be disproportionately larger than if it was just regular people moving in and aging and growing up and dying from disease. So this, uh, I feel like it's not a good option. Uh, you can run at it if you have like super old cities or whatever, but apart from that, it's just bad. Block building around wolves. You can flick this on so that you don't wall in wolves. I like to keep it on, but I don't wall in wolves if I can help it at all. So it's just on my account, on my own orbit, basically, because sometimes I don't want to wall them in, but I need to build something around them, and it's not just to block them in sometimes, so that's why I have it. I love building multiple barracks. I like to keep that on, but I don't use it, because people usually consider that cheating, so again, I count on my honor not to do that, but if there is a situation where it's the only viable way to progress in a certain situation, and people agree with it, I would use it, so it depends but I like to keep it on as just as an option,
but I won't use it because I can restrain myself. So even if it's flicked on, it doesn't mean I'm using it. You can see my cities have only one barracks for the vast majority, 99% of the time. Disable infinite wolf spawning. I highly recommend you flick this on. This is like in Pharaoh or uh, Emperor where enemies or you know, not enemies, animals will infinitely respawn. So wolves, sheep or uh, zebra will actually respawn infinitely. It's super painful to deal with the wolves this way. You would have to just constantly tower around them and keep guards and stuff like that to bash them constantly. Not to mention the noises you would be getting uh, all the time is just disrupting to me a lot. Uh, I like to keep that off, just the wolves are there to block some construction site or uh, part of the map for you to not be able to get resources easily and in this way you can actually you know, clear them and um, be done with that rather than having to constantly bash them. So you can you can, uh, you can can play with it of course if it's your preference but I really don't like it. There's a setting uh, that maximum number of garage temples per city and you can go from 1 or 0 to 5. And I like to keep it maximum size, because if I'm playing on the hardest difficulty, I'm playing custom maps which are insane, and I can support Grand Temples with all the obstructions that are there, I, sh I think I should be able to build as many as I want, basically. So it's just my preference, you might want to restrict yourself more, so that you can only have two, or something like that. But for me personally, if I can afford it, I like to go ham sometimes. Uh, we do play maps where you can't afford even a single gun temple though, so it's not definitely not a thing that happens on all the maps, just on the ones where we have plenty of resources. Now, let's take a look at the other settings. So we have difficulty, we looked at that. And then city management, so these are the other settings, also very important. So buying market ladies won't distribute goods, that means that if you have a block and market lady is coming from the market as a destination walker to go to a granary or a warehouse to fetch goods, she will not provide those goods to people around their pa uh, her path. This could be useful if your city is a elaborate mess, but for me personally I don't bother flicking it on. Uh, it might actually be situationally useful rather than not, so I just like to keep it. Uh, off. Now, card pushers from getting granaries uh, can go through. This is crucial uh, for you to be able to make logistics networks that don't require your blocks to be connected to each other. This is very good because otherwise your market ladies, since they are destination walkers, will path through road roadblocks and gatehouses to go to other blocks to get certain goods if you don't disallow them. So unless you separate food types uh, or Road networks, your blocks will become a huge mess because suddenly you connect your entire city because of this if you need to get food somewhere and uh, market ladies will go apeshit and collect things you don't want which will lead to them neglecting their duty and collecting the nearby resources forcing the blocks to devolve into mess. So keep this on if you want that quality of life. If you want that extra complexity you can play without it. Double capacity of card pushers for getting granaries, I like to keep this on. It cuts the number of getting granaries you need to get in half. Very good for logistics on custom maps, especially with very tight spaces. I don't even feel like some of the maps would be possible without it, or not uh, with the stuff I've built. It's just uh, very good uh, quality of life, I feel like. Allow traders to export food from granaries, so that means that traders can actually go and collect and sell uh, or buy things in granaries and they will also, if you import food, they will also drop it into the granary. It's super useful because otherwise you would have to have a warehouse that accepts food that's imported and then card pusher from the warehouse would have to deliver it to a granary which is just super slow. Uh, it's better if they just can dump it in there. It also means that you can fit a granary pretty well around the dock if you need it because it can have a road coming through it. So that's good, usually. More settings. Tower sentries don't need road access from barracks. This is actually uh, also good for the logistics of the city because you would be connecting your city up with other parts you might not want if you collect your ba uh, connect your barracks to your towers with a road. Uh, in vanilla they will send sentries to man the towers and that will make them functional. But in this setting uh, you don't actually need to build a whole road. It's just one road style for access so they get the global labor pool and uh, uh, 
they will send a sentry even if there is no road connection. I like to keep uh, this because I don't like messy roads on my cities and this would force many messy roads so that's why we have that. Farms and wharves deliver only the nearby granaries. I like to keep that on uh, since sometimes the pathing can be a little bit awkward with the uh, carters but it doesn't actually work that well. I still notice them uh, going quite far so I just keep it on but it's not a very consequential setting. Food isn't delivered to getting granaries. I don't think this should be flicked on. You could have it so that they absolutely don't deposit into getting granaries at all. But I like to keep my getting granaries uh, in the farming block sometimes as well. Because you might have multiple farming areas around the map, which usually happens in custom maps. All houses merge. That's a great setting. It uh, eliminates the mechanic of the game where you have to search for merger tiles, which in vanilla game only certain tiles will support 2x2 two two housing, otherwise the houses will just stay 1x1s one one, even if they are beside each other. And with this setting, all houses will be able to merge into 2x2s. Two two. So that's why we build our blocks like we do, where we keep 2x2 two two gaps and then they merge and then we fill in gaps. You wouldn't be able to really do this in vanilla. In vanilla they only merge when they reach insulate level of housing, I think. So. In early game your city would be a huge mess. The problem with 1x1s by, by the way is that a single house of 1x1 one one will consume the same amount of pottery and furniture and goods in general apart from food as 2x2. Two two. So that's why you want 2x2 two by, uh, two by two houses because it's 4 times as, as much people for the same amount of goods eaten or uh, consumed by the house. Uh, food is different. Food is dependent on the population in the house specifically. So that's all houses merge function. Then we have randomly collapsing clay pits and iron mines take some money instead. So you will still get the pop up, but it will no longer just crash a random clay pit or a mine. It's the most annoying event ever in the game. Nobody uses it for custom maps usually because it's so bad. Uh, but in the campaign even it is there on some missions. So this will instead just take your money and it will not actually crash the mine in question. So that's good. Um, it will st you will still have to pay for it, it just minimizes micro, so that's good for me personally, I like that. Warehouses and granaries don't accept anything when built, so that's just that you have blank slide, none of it being accepted uh, when you build a new warehouse or a granary, I like that. I want to just keep it everything very simple, very streamlined, so no mess in the warehouse or granary, otherwise you would be accepting all the stuff immediately, and you have to mo do more clicks. Houses don't accept, expand in the gardens, that's uh, useful for when you are making patricians mostly, but I don't like to keep that on, I actually like them expanding into gardens for the reasons of building patricians with gardens in mind, because sometimes you want to trick them into more desirability since palaces give out desirability, so they will actually evolve and then they realize they actually have the desirability required and they will stay at that evolution level, but the gardens are necessary to push them through that. Roaming walkers don't skip corners, so if there is a walker like a prefect, if there is a corner like this, they'll actually go like that. Well, if you if you enable this, they'll actually cover the whole corner. It's not a big deal, you can just keep that on, it's inconsequential. Citizens will automatically kill harmless animals. I like to keep this on because I like to get rid of the animals at some point, but on maps, uh, usually like sheep or zebra, which are harmless, will move around. If you speed up the game a little bit, let these sheep move somewhere where they want, and then you want to build something over them. In Augustus, they should actually move when you hover over them. So they are programmed to do that. So no longer will they uh, scupper your constructions uh, needlessly, I think. They should be doing that. Anyways. Yeah. So if you move building over them, you can see that they move away. So you don't have to kill the animals anymore. Uh, but I like to do that anyways, just to get rid of that annoyance, because it still is annoyance. And I think that you should keep that on. Now, uh, also in the options, if you click on options, you can go down and see monthly autosave and yearly autosave. I like to keep that on for bug reasons, because sometimes you might encounter a bug that will uh, shut off your game, and then you would lose your progress. I don't like to use saves and save scum in maps on streams, but uh, if you play by yourself you might as well just use that as well. If you just something horrible happens, just go back. A lot of people play with saves, it's fine. 
Now let's take a look at hotkey options in here so you can customize your hotkeys. Pretty useful to do the screenshot one. Uh, you can also do load and save. You can do ga game speed increase. I like to keep that as plus and minus just to quickly be able to flick through the speed. Also my mouse wheel is zooming in and out. That's pretty useful. Sometimes I like to be pretty close. Another tip for um, what to keep on your settings and hotkeys is uh, switch your overlay. If you keep that on tab, I like to keep that on tab for example. So if I'm building something, even when paused, sometimes the industry will get a little bit cluttered. So I keep this at natives is my favorite one. And then you flick on tab, it's still paused and it will flick on the overlay without you needing, needing to interact with it. And that will make it easier to see behind big buildings and such. So that's useful. You can also customize showing Empire map, but that's what situation, how many times you click on this, not that many times. Clear land, you can uh, actually set up a hotkey for this, and that would be very good to have on E for me. So that I click E, I should be able to get a dig tool. Maybe I need to actually save it and load it then. But yeah, that's pretty good. Okay, yes, now we have it. So that we can just quickly get a good dig tool for us. And I also like to keep uh, another hotkey. I'm gonna show you the hotkey in a sec. So if we uh, set it to Q, it's here. Q, clone building under cursor. So if you hover over something in your city, you can just press Q and you have it and you can place it. It's super useful for replacing or uh, adding industry workshops, something you already have, just click on it, build more, move on. Very good, also housing and things like that. Just hover over something, get, get it even roads, things like that, so you don't have to fiddle around with the UI all the time. Okay, multiple buildings, so you can disable them with X. That's pretty useful to have as a, uh, as a thing. Advisor is not that useful. Overlays, yeah. You want to toggle over the color, uh, current overlay by tab. I like to do that, as I shown you, to minimize that. And then um, we also should take a look at warehouse settings and granary settings for a bit. I like to also keep my uh, grid, but only keep it around the buildable thing I'm currently building because the grid itself is very disruptive when you flick it on. It's like Age of Empires with grid mod, but it's very... Uh, if it was more opaque, maybe it would be better, but like this, it's very disruptive to me personally. So I like to keep play without it, but when I build things, I actually will have that grid around it. And that's also in... What keys? I think? No, it's in uh, settings. Show partial grid around construction, there you go. So, a user interface, this. Now, with the warehouses, what you can actually do, and it's super useful, is you can disable warehouses to be accepting destination walkers as market ladies to get goods from this. So if, you, if it's connected to your rest of your city and you, do, you don't want market ladies to actually come here, you can disable them from doing so with this. Uh, traders, land traders, you can disable them coming here, and they will not or sea traders, because that's also crucial. If the dog has access to some faraway goods, sometimes they will send carters if they have an option to, and that just can just scupper your entire sea trade. So I recommend you don't do that. Of course, you can go into special orders. You can flick this uh, option to refuse all the goods if you flick this on, and then do this. You can just set it all to nothing. You can also customize, of course, getting and accepting. I'm sure you're familiar with what it does. Now we can set uh, multiple items to be uh, stockpiled with only a certain amount being accepted. If if they bring anything more than this, they will not accept it into the warehouse. So you can have multiple things in one warehouse or a granary, which is actually something in vanilla you wouldn't do, but in uh, Augustus is definitely a thing and it saves on space as well. Now with granaries, you can also have this, which is a supply post worker, and they will a quartermaster will collect food for the soldiers and bring it there to feed the army, which that's also affected by the difficulty, hard difficulty, 
soldiers consume more food, which can be very detrimental to your cities. You need to be keeping tabs on that, especially if you have 10 forts with Grand Temple to Mars. Uh, with the Garner, you have some sort of settings, you can do that. And then you also can disable traders or market ladies to come here. Now, uh, with the warehouse, there's one other setting, and that is you can see hold a resource to workshop or granaries. So you can just flick this and they will not deliver the workshops from here. So that's good if you want to stockpile timber and you have some workshops around. You can just flick that on and they will not deliver it. Good for monument construction, for example, if you want to have goods ready. Now I'm thinking uh, if we forgot to mention anything, uh, if you come up with something you want to ask, you can ask away in the comments. This is just my settings. I'm running, but this is what I do and it works pretty well. Some of the things you might not like, so you might customize it yourself, but uh, yeah. Let me know if you have any other questions and it's gonna be it from me for today. So see you around, bye.